Mistake number one happens 90% of the time. Being too fixated on the exact city and dates. When it comes to booking a vacation or any type of air travel, we're typically already settled on what destination to go to and what dates would be perfect for us. Sometimes we do have flexibility as to when to take that vacation, but we rarely use that flexibility. And so, due to our self-imposed schedule, our only option then, which is the regular way, is just to visit a travel agency or search the airline websites, then compare airfares. What you don't know is that most, if not all, airlines already sold all of their tickets in advance. And they're booking you off these bidders, ticket consolidators. Since they're paid already, they don't care flying with vacant seats. What you should do is compete with these bidding companies as they buy, and Google Flight Search Engine can compete with them. What used to be exclusive information to only a few air travel experts is now available for whoever wants to explore. Here's the regular way of booking that guarantees you an expensive airfare. One, settle on your travel destination. Two, come up with travel dates. Three, look up tickets. And here's the irregular way of booking. Inexpensive works with search tools. One, don't settle on your travel destination. Two, don't come up with travel dates. Three, don't look up tickets. Instead, one, find what destinations are offering cheaper tickets, what search tools are good at. Two, pick dates for when low fares are available. For number one, this may or may not be your desired destination, but if you prefer a specific destination, you could be one layover close to it. Let's demo a flight search regarding destination and date flexibility. Say you want to travel from Toronto to Alicante in Spain. We're just going to do a regular Google search for the Google Flight Search Engine. First, we're going to search for all flights departing Toronto. No destination, no dates. Don't worry, we'll specify destination later. Map on the right shows the cheapest flight to many popular destinations, and the cheapest of all are picked and highlighted on the left. Your destination wasn't listed, you can specify it yourself. Specifying a date range creates you a blind spot. You won't know how low the fare is surrounding the date you picked. Google's sort by filter defaults to best flight, a balance between price and convenience, because you don't want to trade tripling your flight duration for a meager savings. Now we're going to specify destination, but no date, staying flexible. Google found us a flight for $952 with a May 13th departure, Date range is always a week, seven days.
Maybe we can use a major airline just to get us to any of those access points or hubs, then use a cheaper local airline to continue our trip. And the Explorer feature highlights those hubs to us. Now, if you have to specify a date range, you can still use other filters to make the most out of your selection. You can still get notified when rates get lower. You can still see how good or bad of a deal you're getting compared to both past and present. And to assess your fare, you can use the date grid. Now, looking at the dates graph, you can see Google's cheapest price of $1,215 highlighted for our departure date of Thursday, August 15th, and the corresponding grayed-out return date of Saturday, August 31st. You can also glance at prices surrounding your picked date range. For example, top left under Monday, August 12th, you can see the price is only $1,064. We can clearly see fares are lower in September and October. And just like with the dates grid, we can go back and forth in the months by clicking this arrow here. It expands our view and we can see how our suggested price fares with that of previous months. Here our dark blue highlighted rectangle doesn't look too bad compared to early July, for example. The price of this date range of July 22nd through August 7th fares better at $1,051. Our rule of thumb is, if a flight time doubles in a layover, it's not worth the savings, the reason why Google defaults to best flight filter. We're looking for a balance, a three to four hour layover max. And Google Flights have two duration filters, one for the layover and one for the flight, as well as other useful filters. One stop of three to four hours is ideal, and we can set the stop filter exactly for that. Now we're comparing to see which hub will cost us less, Paris, London, Madrid, or Barcelona. Remember, you are guaranteed to save when you give up your date range selection if you can afford that, of course. You can always cancel for a lower rate if you booked way in advance. It's okay to specify a date range for the local airliner so it matches that of your main trip. You can also shop this one first, then add the main trip. Regardless, these so-called no-frills airliners are already cheaper. Ryanair and Vueling are such transporters. Let's now do it on mobile. Let's Google for Toronto Barcelona flights on Google or Chrome. You'll see something like this. Here, Google selected the cheapest fare for us and highlighted the price in the middle of this chart, $719, and it's with Air Transit. That's why it's listed first. You may not see the day of the month, like you'd see 18 here on laptop or desktop. But if you scroll down and press or tap on Show Flights, you'll be able to see the day number. Because Google picked the date for us here, you can see this description, Best Departing Flights. 
On top of that, it tells you exactly how much cheaper it is compared to usual. Pay attention to that amount. The picked date is always highlighted just below the price. We can see the rest of the flights and the second cheapest goes to Air Canada. What I want you to remember is that we didn't pick the date range. Google picked it for us. In this example, it picked Saturday, May 18th as the departure date. Do you see the 18th? It's under the price where it says from $719. You don't see the day number on mobile, but on laptop or desktop, it shows as Saturday, May 18th through Friday, May 24th. If you'd picked your date, you wouldn't see price trend information, just the price for your range, which is always higher. Here, I got notified the following day when the fare was lowered. It showed me by how much, because it's trending lower. Mistake number two, not taking full advantage of the 24-hour free cancellation window when booking flights. This is what actually enables shopping for cheaper tickets. For the purpose of free cancellation, the ticket must be booked at least two weeks, one week for U.S. bound, prior to the flight's departure. For the purpose of cheaper tickets, the hunt should have started way, way earlier. The earlier, the better. That's what bidders or resellers do. They grab any cheaper tickets that pop up on their screens. Of course, they have programs to do that. Yes, ticket markets fluctuate the same way as stock markets, with ups and downs based on supply-demand balance. When you hone in your radars, you're likely to book directly with airlines, with the guaranteed perk of 24-hour free cancellation. You heard me right. That 24-hour window is not guaranteed for all search engines. Only some offer that. Now listen up. Google Flights now levels the field for passengers. You can compete and even beat those resellers. You can subscribe for price tracking and get notified when the fare drops lower to your desired range. How finally fair is that? Mistake number three, assuming cheap last minute fares exist. You think airlines will have to drop prices to fill the plane's vacant seats? Most airlines have already sold those tickets to bidders. The latter would rather leave a ticket unsold to protect against a dip trend. That's why you sometimes see planes fly with seats unfilled, even if your partner wanted to book so badly. In addition, business travelers tend to book last minute, tilting the supply-demand balance in favor of higher prices. Airlines and bidders are aware of this trend and will boost fares closer to departure. Here's a double whammy with last-minute booking. You can't cancel less than 24 hours without a penalty. Yikes! Which brings us to mistake number four. Mistake number four, being loyal to that one airliner. They're not loyal to you. Why should you be? It's just business, after all. Your loyalty should be to cheap flights first and foremost. It's just as fair. Mistake number five, using some budget airline that plays on fee structure to make it look cheaper. Don't give up your carry-on and pay extra for the basics that should be included. Use Google Flights to battle this obscurity. Google Flights shows you exactly what is and what is not included in the price of your ticket. For example, it tells you how much luggage is included in the ticket price and how much for extra luggage. It can even tell you whether the carry-on bag is included in the base fare. Mistake number six, not reading and interpreting the layovers carefully. Trading a nonstop fare for three layovers and an overnight in some remote airport to save $18? Now this used to be an issue and will still be if you don't use Google Flights. Mistake number seven, installing a shopping browser extension. 
don't get your browser compromised by some shopping extension. You want a cheaper ticket without getting your browser navigation hijacked in the process. No third-party extension can match Google Flights. It's the only flight search engine that keeps the airline business honest. No more being scammed with some airline economy ticket that's more expensive than another's premium ticket.